From Weatherford, Oklahoma, this is Midwest Sports Saturday. Hi, I'm Joey McWilliams. Glad to get to be with you on this Thursday afternoon. Yes, it is a Thursday. Now, granted, we're doing things a little bit differently on this debut program, but that's all right. That's how we roll. We have the opportunity each and every week to get to bring you sports, small college sports from around the Midwest region, as MidwestSports.net covers the states of Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma, and we're excited to get to bring you our debut program from here on the campus of Southwestern Oklahoma State University in Weatherford, Oklahoma. And this will be a tentative format as we go through. We'll get to visit on game day, and of course, football season, that's a perfect game day. Football season is here, and the Division II schedule gets underway on Thursday night this year. We have a big matchup here in Weatherford as the Southwestern Bulldogs are taking on the Arkansas Monticello Bowl Weevils. And also a big new thing here in Southwestern, well, big new coach that we have. The new coach at Southwestern, the Bulldogs, Coach Chet Povelish. Coach, thank you for joining us today here on Midwest Sports Saturday. Yes, on a Thursday, and uh, that's just how it goes. You are our first guest on our debut program, so congratulations. Thank you. I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> well, well I, I'm excited not only to get to have you on the program, but also get to visit with you. As game time is less than two hours from now. You guys have a big matchup. I, I want to get first off to where you are uh, just coming in, new coach. It's your first opportunity of many years of coaching experience under your belt, but just going into your first game, how do you feel? I'm excited, extremely excited. Um, been looking forward to this opportunity for a long time, and now it's finally here, so can't wait. All right, now the big thing around Southwestern, if you follow Southwestern on Twitter and you follow the Bulldogs, Southwestern Athletics, and beyond, one of the things that we have seen since the announcement of your hiring, and I think it was within seconds of when you actually <laughs> accepted the coaching position, we saw the hashtag spot the ball. What does spot the ball mean? I get asked that a lot. Uh, spot the ball basically means – you know, put the ball down, we're going to play. It, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter when, it doesn't matter who. You put it down, we're going to show up, we're going to play. You know, we'd say Sahara Desert or, or Lambeau <laughs> Field, doesn't matter. Parking lot, we're going to play. We're here to play. I think the conditions in Weatherford are closer to the Sahara Desert today than maybe Lambeau. Yeah, it looks like kickoff could be around at 100 degrees. <laughs> so. Well, it, it's a beautiful day, though. And, of course, uh, as always in, in Weatherford, if you've ever seen uh, a football game on the campus here at, at Milan Stadium, this is the ASAP kickoff classic here on this August 30th, the Thursday night. The wind is blowing. That's fitting. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Western Oklahoma, the wind is blowing. That's <laughs> have, for sure. Have you become accustomed to that? I mean, is that part of, of practices? And I've thought about that before. When, when you play for the Bulldogs, you know the wind is always going to be a factor do you make that a part of your practices? We really do, especially in the kicking game. You know, catching kicks and returning kicks, it's a big part of it because it's obviously a lot different with the wind and against the wind. Um, but we, we throw the ball pretty well in the wind right now with, with Casey Freeman, so, you know, that's not as big a factor. But the kicking game, it definitely does have a factor. Speaking now with Coach Chet Pobolish for the Southwestern Bulldogs, and, and let's go into that then and talking about tonight's game. You do bring back Casey Freeman as, as quarterback and really a player to watch this season, not only for your team, but I think around the region. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, Casey's really grown since I got here in the spring, um, you know, exponentially from, from the first spring practice, you know, to yesterday's walkthrough. He, he gets better every day. Um, he really understands football, you know, which is a plus, you know, and sometimes I'll ask him, you know, questions. Why did you do that? And, and he's always got pretty good reasoning behind what he's doing. So I'm um, very fortunate to walk in a situation with, with somebody with some, some experience like Casey. Coach, uh, moving over to the defensive side of the ball for just a moment, it's, it's going to be a different look for the Bulldogs this season as you are bringing in a 3-4 look on defense. I, I realize you, know, you bring in your own players to an extent, but uh, the cupboard wasn't bare when you got here. You, you have a, a roster and, and many that were here before you got here. How have they made that adjustment, and how does that uh, play into tonight? Um, you know, it does and it doesn't. You know, last night I had the team stand up, anybody that, who did not take a, st a snap in the last game of the, the season last year, and probably 95% of those kids did not take a snap in that last game. Um, for whatever reason, injury, red shirt, and stuff like that. But the ones that were here have done a great job through the transition. Um, you know, and talk about the 3-4, it's something that when, when I approached Coach McClellan about the job, I, I told him that's what I wanted to do, and that's what he's familiar with, so it worked out really good. Um, he's somebody that I really trust, and, I mean, he's a rock star. He, he works his tail off in recruiting and, and coaching and everything that he does. So very fortunate to have him and, and run his defense. So. 
And you you talk about your your coaches as well, and and you're and you're familiar with them, able to to bring some over. What kind of a luxury is that? It's it's been great. I mean, just to have some guys that you're surrounded with that know you know what you expect and what to do and how practice is supposed to be ran and the expectations of the kids. You know, and Coach Hennis, I got to mention him. He's my offensive coordinator. He played for me in Emporia State. Uh, we worked together at Delta State and in southeastern Louisiana. Um, he's my right hand man. He's probably more of a brother than he is an assistant because he can not only get my back, but he can tell me that's not right or we need to do it this way. <laughs> and he's, he's not a yes man. He's, he's actually a, a big asset to this program and to me. That's important. I've I've heard it said before that if you're smart uh, or if you're if you're not smart, you surround yourself with smart people. If you're smart, you surround yourself with people that are smart that think differently than you do. And 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 it's good to have somebody that's not just going to say yes. And that's exactly right. And and probably if anything else, he understands my weaknesses and those are his strengths. So, you know, th that works out really well and like I count on him to do a lot and he does a lot for this program. So, very fortunate to have him and coach McClellan. All right. As you are getting ready to get things going tonight, and again, thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, it's not only a new school, but it's a, a new league. You talked yeah. about Emporia State. Uh, you were most recently also in the in the MIAA. You're making a transition to a new group of teams, and how how does something like that work? Is it just a new feel? You get to see 11 new teams this year. Yeah, but you know, I was in the Gulf South Conference when the Arkansas schools were 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 in the Gulf South at that time, so I'm somewhat familiar with them. I've been to Arkadelphia, I've you know, I've been to <laughs> Russellville, I've I've, I've take, made those trips. Um, but you know, the Oklahoma schools I wasn't very familiar with. But you know, just excited really to see where we're at. I, you know, I know where I would think we are, but to see how we compare to other teams. Um, and I, I told the guys, you know, we're, I want to see us work hard and get better. The score at the end of the game will see where we are as a team. So I'm just excited to see where that is. All right, Coach Chet Povilish getting ready to spot the ball. Spot the For the ball. first time officially as the head coach here, it is game day, no doubt about that. And uh, kickoff is at 6 o'clock tonight, so that's going to be fun. We look forward to getting to watch that as well and, and to see how you do it. Coach, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks again for having me. All right, as we continue now, let's let's look at the Division II rankings. Now, these are the MidwestSports.net rankings of Division II football within our region, of course, Arkansas, Iowa, and Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma. The top team in Division II, our preseason rankings coming in. The Fort Hayes State Tigers had a record of 11-1 and last season and pretty much swept their way through that MIAA, the tough conference that it is. Fort Hayes State, the number one team in Division II, according to the MidwestSports.net rankings. And the rest of the top ten looks a little bit like this as we're preparing to get to see uh, someone from the opposite side of the ball, that ball that's about to be spotted. He'll be up here with us in just a moment. Northwest Missouri, perennial powerhouse, number two in our rankings right now. Harding Bisons, number three in the rankings. And by the way, Harding made it to the Division II run, uh, excuse me, Final Four last year, made it to the semifinals. And so they're number three in our rankings right now. Also from the GAC, number four, Southern Arkansas, had a 7-4 and four record last year. Barrett Renner, a star quarterback there, looking to make some headway for one more year for the Mule Riders. Number five, Central Missouri. Number six, Pittsburgh State. Number seven, Central Oklahoma. Number eight, Washita. Number nine, Arkansas Tech. And number 10, Southeastern Oklahoma. And that's a look at our Division II rankings. We'll talk a little bit more about some of the matchups then a little bit later on Midwest Sports Saturday. Right now, it's a privilege to get to visit with someone who's going to be calling this game tonight. But you might see he doesn't have the blue on. He has the green on right now. This is the play-by-play -play announcer for the Arkansas Monticello Bowl Weevils, Jimmy Sledge. Jimmy, appreciate you taking some time and stopping by with us here this afternoon. Thanks, Joey. Uh, glad to stop by and uh, glad to help out. Well, and, and I know. I saw you as, as he came in. He still had his uh, his suitcase on, suitcase on the rollers. I mean, he really just got here just in time to be a part of this. So it's game day. It is. It doesn't seem like it's been. Where'd the summer go? <laughs> if, you know, we're ready for game day, and it's hot outside, and it's going to be a tough ball game tonight. It, you know, it really should. And and uh, Arkansas, Oklahoma. Of course, I, I live in Oklahoma as well, and it's uh, the weather's just been ri almost ridiculous. And and I don't know if if it's just that I've forgotten what it was like when I was younger. If it was this hot, maybe I've just gotten a little bit soft. Early in early in August in Arkansas, we had some rain and cooler weather, so you know practices went pretty good. But then the last two weeks, it's been like it is here in Oklahoma, just hot, <laughs> humid, and stuffy. Well, the, the good the good thing about Weatherford too, it in is that wind. I mean, it it doesn't matter how hot it gets. And I've been here uh, broadcast games when it's hot, broadcast games when it's 
cold. The wind is a factor and does keep uh, some of the humidity out. Uh, Jimmy, going into tonight's contest, again, uh, here on the campus of Southwestern Oklahoma State University, Milam Field, it's the ASAP kickoff classic, and it'll be Southwestern hosting Monticello. Now, this was the season opener last year. It was a tight, tight contest all the way down to the wire. 20-19, to 19, UAM had a chance to uh, win it with a last-minute field goal. It got blocked there at the end, and, and, you know, it was at UAM. Just a disappointing start to the season for the Weavers. Dominic Blue from Southwestern. I, you, did you call that name? Did yes. people get sick of hearing yeah, that Dominic name? Blue, yes. All <laughs> night. In Monticello. Uh, Dominic Blue with the block of the field goal attempt last year to salvage a victory for Southwestern. So we come into tonight's matchup. Let's talk about the, the Weavers for just a little bit. The name that stands out to me is, is Cole Sears. I mean, at the quarterback position, he really is – I think a player that burst onto the scene, I felt like uh, two or three years ago, and just really hasn't backed down. I mean, he continues to lead his team well. He's fought through injury through his career. He's done a great, great job. Of course, UAM's had some great quarterbacks in the past. He's set to uh, maybe take over some of those numbers, you know, this year, if he has a good year this year. Cole Sears is there. you got six, uh, five other returning starters on offense as well. Monty Riley's going to be the running back. But uh, there's been some competition at the running back spot, so we'll see how that plays out tonight. Now, that's uh, – and, and that was a transfer as well, right? I mean, Riley's been there. He's been there since his freshman year. But, uh, you, you know, you bring people in, and, and uh, it can shake things up a bit. It, it has. And, and as you said, Armani's been a pretty amazing story. He was a walk-on, earned his spot as a starter, and earned a, a scholarship there as well. So he's a hometown boy from Monticello. He'll also uh, factor into special teams as well, won't he? Yeah, exactly. You have to watch him out. Uh, they'll put him back on returns sometimes, and uh, he's he's got the speed to break away. One of the names that you probably will want to call because you've done it for so long, but you can't do it unless you're watching TV right now, is Jalen Tolliver. He's making his way in and uh, – trying to make it into the NFL, but, I mean, what a stellar career he had there. And I, I, well, I'm just staying on the offensive side of the ball and talk about a, a fantastic receiver there as, as he's moved on, but set some records. He set some records, uh, the big shoes to fill. I uh, talked with uh, Coach Jackson yesterday. We did our pregame interview yesterday, and he talked about the competition there had been at wide out. There's been some folks step up. He's expecting big things. He knows that they can't be a Jalen Tolliver, but they want, he wants them to do the best they can do every time. You know, and, and somebody has to step up. That's the thing. I mean, it, it doesn't matter uh, how great the previous receiver or back or quarterback or defensive player it, it was. You just have to take advantage of the opportunities that, that, that are there. And, and maybe we'll get to see that from one of those receivers tonight and step up and maybe not be the next one but be the first him. We'll look at, we'll look at big things out of Ralph Singleton. He's a returning starter. Also, uh, Malcolm Staten. We'll look for him at the wide receiver spot and maybe – they can step up and see what, what they've got to do. Uh, talking now with Jimmy Sledge, who is the play-by-play announcer for Arkansas Monticello, and you'll be live tonight. Tell tell us where we can listen to your broadcast. Well, we're uh, only locally. In, only locally. In southeast Arkansas on 93.7 KHBM. We're the flagship station for UAM Sports, and we do all football, basketball, softball, and baseball. All right. Well, our broadcasts make it to Arkansas. Okay. I mean, so we're we're broadcasting. It can be picked up in Arkansas. So, uh, folks, you can listen locally right there and, and hear Jimmy's call tonight. Uh, kickoff is going to be around 6 o'clock tonight, so be ready for that. Now, we uh, talk about the defense just a little bit because you know, we mentioned the 3-4 and that being a new thing here uh, in Weatherford. It's not a new thing from what from what you've seen and, and what we'll see on the field from the night tonight from the green and black that they'll go into three four start to three four and, and if you go back and look at it they've had good success at it they're going to expect big things out of hakeem gray returning starter uh up on the defensive line and linebacker and then uh in the free safety spot is uh singleton back there and, and he'll be back there at, he i talked with coach jackson yesterday he expected him to be one of the leaders out there and really direct traffic and tell everybody where to get and line up monticello Fighting through then, trying to break into the upper half of, of the conference standings, and it's just been a challenge. I mean, you, you, you see the Weevils play. They play quality football year in and year out. It has been a challenge in recent years just to try to break into that upper echelon. The Great American Conference, from a football perspective, has uh, just seeming to grow as the conference itself gets older. You know, Coach Jackson's beginning his eighth season. Uh, last year, I think we lost a total of four games by less than seven points. So we were right there, just like the season opener, lost by one. Right. So they've been right there on the bubble, just hadn't been able to break that bubble and be over the top. 
Well, talk about what you think then that we're going to see tonight, watching the, the contest a little bit later on. I think we'll see an explosive offense out of UAM with Cole Sears, of course. You expect big things out of him. But I think we'll see a better defense this season. Uh, they've really worked hard this summer and spring and uh, spring and summer and then into the fall camp. But uh, just talking with Coach Jackson and the coaching staff, they feel really good about this defense maybe being able to keep pe folks not from scoring as much. All right. So I'm not asking for a score. No. But with well, – and, and I wouldn't I wouldn't put that kind of pressure on you. 20-19 to 19 from last year's game, do you think the scoring could be right around there? I think so. I think, you know, three-point game either way. So then it'll be a contest. It'll be a blood battle out here today. All right, Southwestern and UAM. And, again, locally you can hear Jimmy Sledge on the call tonight as it is game day and the 2018 season is upon us. Jimmy, thank you very much for stopping by here on Midwest Sports Saturday. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. All right, now that was a look to it, Division Two. Now we're going to continue uh, here on Midwest Sports Saturday and look at some other rankings. Of course, the NAIA uh, getting things underway. Football season actually started last week. It got, to, got going as early as August 23rd, and uh, that was a Thursday night game. Evangel took care of business at home up in Springfield and beat the number 23 team in the country, Southwestern Assemblies of God out of Waxahachie. And so Evangel may be creeping into uh, onto our look as uh, one of those top teams in the NAI. Let's look at the Midwest Sports dot net regional rankings from the NAI in football Morningside the Mustangs 13 and 1 last year and made it all the way to the NAIA semifinals they're not going to be playing this week they did defeat William Penn last Saturday 49 to 21 and so they are 1 and 0 on the season also in the NAI number 2 team in the country Northwestern out of Iowa 11 and 3 playoff appearance last year as well Langston the number 3 team in NAI according to our the Midwest Regional Rankings here, the number three team, 10-1 and one last year, undefeated through the regular season, lost in the first round of the playoffs to that Northwestern Iowa team that I just mentioned. The number four team in NAI, Baker, number five, Benedictine, number six, Oklahoma Panhandle in its second season back in the NAIA. Number seven is Grandview, number eight, Sterling, number nine, Tabor, and number 10, Kansas Wesleyan. A few teams out of the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference there. And, of course, a lot of the NAIA games will be getting underway on Saturday. No NAIA games tonight on a Thursday night, but that's okay. We're still doing Midwest Sports Saturday on a Thursday. Why? Because that's how we roll. And I'm sitting here rolling next to a friend of mine, someone who keeps things going here, no doubt about that, here at Weatherford, the Sports Information Director, Doug Self. Doug, thank you very much for stopping by because I know you have a lot going on. Now, I'm pointing out you'll get a chance to see uh, the camera angle when we spin it around here in just a moment. But we are just, I mean, there's a little bit of glass that's keeping us from 105-degree weather out there <laughs> at Highland Stadium right now in 40-mile-an-hour winds. So uh, that that's something. You've got a lot going on today. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, Joey, it is a busy day, and uh, you know. But first and foremost, I want to say thank you for being here because this this setup is awesome. I know I've heard you talk about it for years that this was the dream, this was the goal where we're going with MidwestSports.net, and to have you here on our campus on this day, you know, to kick off our 2018 season, the you know the spot the ball era, and have you here with us is um, it's very exciting, and so you know we're looking forward to it. But, but like you said, busy day, busy day. Um, soccer teams out there playing Central Missouri, the number one team in the nation. The Defending national champions, a team that knocked us out of the tournament last year, and at last check we're up 2-0. So oh, the, the another score. The day's off to a good start. All right. Last I heard, it was one at uh, one lead, uh, one zero lead at the, at the half, and then yeah, you've gone up now. It was within a minute of the start wow. of the second half. And Emory Fury got the goal. So li at last check, the dogs are up 2-0 with roughly you know probably 35 minutes left to go out at the complex. Now I, we obviously won't want to talk about football, and thank you very much. I can't imagine a better place to to have our debut program than than Southwestern and here on the campus at Weatherford. But just for a moment, that that would be a huge win. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we went into the tournament last year, we had to win the tournament, the GAC tournament, to get into the national tournament, and then you know rolled off two wins there. And by virtue of that, we moved into the national rankings at the end of the year. And you know. Most times the rankings at the beginning of the next year go off of that. So we started, you know, 17th, and it allowed us a, a top 25 matchup to start the year. And it's a team that's, you know, we've played them to start the year. Now this is the third straight year, and they've taken us down those two years in the past, plus last year in the regional. So I know our team was hungry for it, and it looks like they're 
you know, so far so good. Obviously, that's a long way to go against the, you know, you never count a champion right. out. So hopefully they can finish. But, I mean, that's a that's a great way to kick off the year. All right. Up 2-0 right now over the defending national champions. That's women's soccer. And that probably will warrant some attention later on in the day. Don't forget that tonight, following the game, we'll be back on. We'll have some scores from around the Midwest region as well. Possibly get to talk to one of the players from the winning team tonight is uh, Southwestern taking on Arkansas Monticello. That'll be about 20 to 30 minutes following game time here at Southwestern. Again, kickoff is at 6 o'clock. So I think that does warrant a little bit of attention later on. In the meantime, though, it's game day here. And it's, uh, it's a football atmosphere going on right now. You could feel it as, even as we drove into town and we got here about noon today in Weatherford. You could feel it. it it's football time. Yeah, it really is. You know, last November we introduced Coach Povilish and some of the, the first words out of his mouth were spot the ball. <laughs> and ever since then, that's, there's just been a lot of interest around that, people wondering what does that mean, you know. And, and he explains it time and time again. And then as the people start buying into that, you see the energy level around town. It started here on campus with the team. It spreads throughout, you know, our entire university, our department, and then it spreads throughout the town. And there's a lot of people that are that are hyped. They're interested to see how the spot the ball era is going to go, especially – you know, everyone wants to be here for the first night. And, um, you know, I don't know, the interest keeps growing and growing. I, I saw Coach Poblish lead the team down down the hill, you know, after their pregame meal. You can tell that's an excited group of players and coaches, a little maybe a little antsy at this point, too. <laughs> I think they're just ready to get out there and get the game started, Actu to actually spot the ball and actually. start the game. And, and t to actually get that yeah. done. Well, with, with what we have here then and, and football getting ready to be kicked off, uh, we talked about the fact that, that you're a busy man just for a moment. I mean, encapsulate in 60 seconds what you do on game day, especially the opening uh, season opener. Man, it's been it's been quite a day already. Just it's it's all goes into the preparation. You know, the games themselves, that's the payoff. So all the hard work is behind the scenes, getting everything set up in the press box, getting, you know, phone lines, making sure our radio people have that stuff taken care of, making sure I got my printer so I can get stats to everybody, making sure live stats work so all the people that are unable to be here, you know, have a way to keep up and, and follow along with the game. And, you know, luckily our radio station takes care of the video broadcast. Otherwise, that used to be part of it because, you know, it's not just for the people here in the stadium because there are, you know, great scripts for them, for the, the PA announcement and stuff like that. But we want to make sure everybody out there in Bulldog Nation has a way to follow this game and has a way to, to keep track of how the Bulldogs are doing tonight. All right. Now let's let's go to the field right now. Coach talked about Casey Freeman being out there and, and mentioned uh, him on offense. Uh, offense, has the look uh, changed that much from one year to the next? I know it's a it's a different it's a different staff, yeah. but uh, you know some of those same players coming in. There are some very similar names that I think that you know the Bulldog fans will recognize. Um, obviously, Casey's the the main one you think of, but you know we've got an academic All American um, offensive lineman returning in Brandon Rowe, our starting center Justin Bigelow is a three year starter, and then you know the skill guys. We got a couple really good wide receivers back as well. J.R. Omiji um, back for his senior year, he was All Conference two years ago. Um, Jared Rayburn came back last year and had a huge year and led us in um, receptions. So there are some names. There's going to be a lot of names that you don't know yet. I think especially at those skill positions. Um, you know, Keyshawn Richards is a running back who I think. Um, he's got a potential to have a really big year, and he's got a couple transfer wide receivers as well. Um, Turner Jackson from southeastern Louisiana and Trey Billington from southeast Missouri are some of the, the names that I keep hearing. You know, I made it to a lot of practices the first week and haven't as much since then, but those are some guys, I think, some names you'll get used to hearing. And that's, and that's exactly what I was hoping that you would do. Of course, when you get to visit with a sports <laughs> information director, as Doug Self is here, and I'd like to call him sports information director extraordinaire because – I think he's one of the best in the business, regardless regardless of division. Uh, Doug does a great job. Well, then drop some names on the defensive side of the ball then for Southwestern fans that may be watching. Yeah, I guess you got to start up front. Um, you know, our D-line does have three guys back. The three projected starters are all guys that were here a year ago. DJ Johnson and TJ Harris are probably the, the, the main ones that will be, you know, causing havoc up front. And then, you know, it, it changes a little bit with the dynamic, but the – the guy that keeps making plays every time I'm out there at practice is Braden Sweet. He played, um, mm -hmm. kind of played a safety position last year. They moved him down to one of those outside linebacker positions in the 3-4. And I swear, every time I watch a practice, he's the guy in the backfield getting to the quarterback. You know, they can't hit the quarterback. So he's the guy <laughs> who runs by, taps him on the head, and, you know, then he gives his celebration or whatever. But, um, you know, he's had a really good camp, and I'm looking forward to think he'll have a big year. And then the, the back end is it's kind of unknown. 
Um, there's a lot of new faces back there. Um, Darian Richards was a freshman cornerback last year who had to play late in the season and did some good things. And then Quentin Gale is uh, one of the safeties. And, you know, last year he got hurt during preseason camp, and so he had to rehab it all. He's moved from corner to safety. So, um, you know, he keeps – he keeps making plays. He's another one of those guys. Every time I'm out there, he, he makes a play, and so I look forward. It's great to see him back on the field, and I hope he can have a good year. On a hot day like this is, and, and it seems like these seasons get started earlier and earlier all the time. I remember covering a game, uh, Oklahoma Baptist first game back as, as the football program had been reinstated after about 73 years, and it was August 31st, yeah. and it was – a noon start time because they didn't have lights there at the field at the time. It was 117 degrees on the field, and it was just amazing. It seems like these games go farther and farther back. It's a hot day today. Do you feel like that will have something to do with the – how does that affect the game? Yeah, you know, I feel like the first football game of every season, you know, there's a lot of execution that goes into it, but I feel like a lot of times the, the game can be decided by which team's in better shape. You know, every team in the GAC is so balanced that – you know, it's going to come down to not turning the ball over and, you know, having the conditioning to, to pull through in the fourth quarter because it, it never fails. The first week of the year, you always see cramps play a part in it and you see depth. Um, so I think the conditions out there, it, it is a warm one. I think both teams have probably gotten plenty of practice in those warm temperatures, but there's, there's nothing that can make up for that, um, you know, playing a game with the <coughs> adrenaline flow in mm -hmm. and, you know, all of the um, energy that's going to be exerted by those guys. So I think I think the – uh, weather conditions could play a factor. All right, really quickly then, last question. With all this that, that you know and all, all that you've talked about what, from what you've seen from Southwestern, of course, Jimmy Sledge was talking about the Bull Weevils just a moment ago. No score, high scoring or low scoring game tonight? I'm expecting high scoring. I think the, the spot the ball area is going to get off to an exciting start, and I think there will be plenty of points on that scoreboard down there. All right. This is Doug Self. He's the Sports Information Director here at Southwestern, and we are just extremely happy, Doug, that you took the time for us today on Midwest Sports Saturday. Thanks, Joey. Like I said, we're glad to have you here. All right. Now, we're going to uh, move things around just a little bit. We get to see somebody that we're used to seeing her at a different time of year. So we're going to turn the camera around now right now and get to visit with Haley Tucker. Now, Haley Tucker at Southwestern, is one of the phenomenal women's basketball players oh. in the Great American Conference. I'm telling the truth. I have <laughs> I've seen you play over the last three years. A very good basketball player, but she's also a broadcaster in her own right. So you have a couple of people to talk about Southwestern because we might want to know a little bit more about these Bulldogs. Yeah, well, thank you, Joey, and thank you for having me on this. I mean, even thinking about me, that's awesome. Thank you. But, yeah, here with me I have Blake and Taylor, and if you just want to introduce yourselves a little bit, just t talk about – why are you here at Swasu? What made you want to come here? Your degree, where you're wanting your degree in. So just just talk about yourself a little bit. I'm uh, Blake Adams, and I'm on the rodeo team here at Swasu. And uh, I mean, it's a it's awesome. It's not too far from the house. Got a great rodeo program, and I'm st studying business at the moment. Business. What do you want to do with that? Do, or what what class are you right now? Um, I'm a freshman. Okay, yeah, so you, you're probably a little bit undecided, huh? Right, so I'm majoring in rodeo, <laughs> and <laughs> so I uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens. How is, I guess, rodeoing for Coach Visneski? Oh, it's it's awesome. He's uh, he's so good about staying mentally tough and, and just running like a family-style program as opposed to just every man for himself, which rodeo is an individual sport for the most part. So, uh that's a totally new aspect that I hadn't really seen before c coming in into Southwestern. Yeah, and you talk about a family style aspect. Taylor, I know that you're a cheerleader here at Southwestern. What are you studying? What year are you? And just talk a little bit about yourself as well. Well, I'm Taylor Lewis. Um, I am a senior here at Swasu. I'm majoring in health science, so I plan to one day become a PA. So hopefully, luckily, I'll get in um, for the next um, round of PA pro PA programs. Um, but yeah, I'm a cheerleader here. I'm actually injured right now, so that's why I'm not in full uniform. But I'm really excited to uh, experience game day as on a different side of the field this year. So, or this game, I suppose. So yeah, PA, that's a little scary business right there. <laughs> but I'm here to ask you a little bit of trivia about Southwestern. And if you do good, do bad, it's okay. We got some t-shirts for you, okay? Gotcha. Okay, so Blake, who is the biggest bulldog rival that we have in our conference? 
I don't know as far as other sports, but our rival is Southeastern at Durant. Southeastern and Durant. Taylor, would you like to say a little something else about that? Well, I know that Bulldog football, our big rival is Northwestern. Northwestern is correct. And it's correct with women's basketball and men's basketball, too. Just saying out, the, out, the, out loud. All right. Who is the current president of Southwestern Oklahoma State University? Uh, Taylor, I got this one. I got this one. Okay. The president of Swasu is Randy Butler. Oh, I'm going to be in trouble <laughs> for not <laughs> Is he one of your teach? Is he one of your professors? No, but he shows up for breakfast pretty often. At at least at one rodeo every semester. Takes him to breakfast. Doesn't know his name. That's all right, Blake. That's all right. You're a it's your freshman. It's okay. All right. Next question for you, Blake. What conference are the Bulldogs a part of? Division two. What conference within Division two? Um, we're Central Plains. Central Plains. GAC. Right. Oh, Great American Conference. Great American Conference is correct. That's okay. That's okay. We're different. Where, where did you get Central Plains from? Central Plains region. Like, the nation split up. Like, they're the GAC, like, division. Mm -hmm. We're Central Plains region, like Oklahoma, Kansas. That's half a point. I, I'll Half a point right there. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. You're senior. Yeah. Freshman. Freshman. Yeah, there we go. Okay, <laughs> this one's a tough one, Taylor. It's for you. In what year did the Bulldogs join NCAA Division II? Oh, um. Best guess. I think, I think it's like 1997. 1997? Guess for you? 98. Okay, we got a 97, 98. It was 1997. What, I wish we could have a little score pinger right now. It might be four, four and a half. <laughs> All right, next question. True or false? Who is this one for? I think for you. Okay, for Blake, all right. Swasu and Arkansas Monticello have played in seven previous meetings. With the home team winning every one of those games, is that true or is that false? We'll say true. True? I'm going to say true. true. Man, you're both wrong, man. <laughs> Last year, I was actually at this game. We took a little private jet down there. It was super nice. But Dominic Blue actually blocked the field goal kick to, to for Arkansas Mo Monticello to win the game. So, but I know you heard about it, right? Yeah, yeah, we all heard about that one. Okay, next question. This is for Taylor. What year was Swasu founded as Southwestern Normal School? Oh, okay. I think I know this one. Um, 1901? 1901? 1905. 1905. It was 1901! <laughs> Taylor really knows her Southwestern school. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, next question. This is going to be a tough one. If you know women's basketball, you'll know this one, okay? Who is the leading scorer in all of Southwestern history? And this one's for you, Blake. Mm. You. <laughs> no, I, I wish. No, it's not me. If you. Yeah. Okay, I think I know. I feel like I should get this one right. Um, Kelly Litch. Kelly Litch, which is the aunt of your boyfriend, so I'm glad she got that one right. Yeah, <laughs> glad she got that one right, yeah. <laughs> but thank you all for playing. I mean, that was super, super fun. We got some t-shirts right there for you. It might be a little big on you, Taylor. I'm super sorry, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> but Joey, thank you so much for having me on here, and thank you guys as well. And back to you, Joey. We get this turned around here, and thank you very much, Haley. Appreciate that a lot. And this is what uh, the contestants are getting. I'm getting a MidwestSports.net T-shirt, and you know it's interesting. They're in this kind of southwestern blue today. Okay. Well, I knew where I was coming today, so I'd say it, it, they may not be this color next week, but they're this this color this I'm week. So that was really pretty good. And actually, you know. I, I'm, I'm impressed. First off, I need to introduce the person that's sitting across from me right now, uh, Todd Thurman, who is the athletic director here at Southwestern. I still call you coach. I mean, in my mind, you know, that's one of those things that doesn't go away. There are kids who still call me coach. Well, that's fine, that, and I'd rather be called coach, okay. <laughs> to be honest with you. Mr. <laughs> Thurman, I look for my dad. Exactly. So. Well, uh, I, I was impressed, by the way, with their knowledge. Before, before we go any farther and I ask you a couple more questions about Southwestern, I was impressed with their knowledge. Uh, and you could see then the, the different aspects of their life. Number one, a cheerleader 
who, by the way, I mean, she had to get the Kelly Litch one right. I mean, if <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, <laughs> no doubt about that. If 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 you're dating someone that's related to <laughs> Kelly Litch, you have to get that one right. I think if you walk on the campus of Southwestern, you have to get a you Kelly Litch question Kelly right. right. That's right. But rodeo is a different thing. I mean, we can talk about the the Great American Conference. Rodeo has a different conference. Rodeo has just it's a different animal. Oh, absolutely. I. Um when I when I first got here as a, as a coach, they said, "Well, we have rodeo, and you need to work it." Well, I didn't realize <laughs> what that meant until I got out there, and uh, I did forget my boots that day, and I and I, I regretted it ever since. Uh, rodeo, uh, although it's it's not your normal uh, sport and what you think of of when you think, okay, we have student athletes, but I, I may say they they are probably the greatest student athlete. They uh, uh, the things they do aren't normal. You know, those guys that get on those crazy bulls and those crazy yeah. uh, uh, saddle broncs and, and whatnot are, are amazing. And the ladies uh, and how fast they ride those horses and whatnot. I mean, you have to be great athletes uh, to do those things. And so we are uh, we are so proud of them. They, they have got such a great history. Dr. Doc Mitchell uh, started that program, won six national championships. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have lots of big blue banners out there uh, because of what he did uh, back in his day here. And, and we now have a coach named Mike. We, we call him Mike V. Uh, it's Mike Visniski, but uh, Michael V. Got to be gone with V. Yeah, absolutely. And he's uh, he's done an amazing job. So rodeo is a different animal. It, it's uh, uh, At first I didn't know a lot about it, but uh, I know way more than I used to. Plus the fact is my <laughs> uh, my boss, the president, uh, Randy Butler, um, you know, Butler Ranch is uh, l one of the largest, uh, world largest uh, heavy uh, rough stock providers in the, you know, like I said, in the world. So that's his family. So I better know something about you better. rodeo. Absolutely. <laughs> you better, absolutely. if not, pick it up really yeah, quickly. Real quick, absolutely. Well, speaking now with, with Todd Thurman, who's the athletic director here at Southwestern, it's game day, Coach. And I know that this is one of those feelings that you just, you know, there's there's no no different feeling, and the summer just can't go by quickly enough. You know, everybody thinks you're, you're just doing nothing in the summer, which is not true. There's so much to do during that time, but it – it's not the same. You know, you're you're trying to prepare and get things ready to go uh, for the fall fall sports when they get when they finally arrive. Uh, but the anticipation of getting here uh, is is something that uh, you just don't understand unless you live it. We're so happy that we have a ball being bounced. We're so happy that we have people getting ready to get hit and uh, <laughs> and, and some some competition getting ready to go on. Uh, soccer's already started off this uh, this afternoon playing Central Missouri uh, out there on our uh, North Complex. The volleyball is four and one right now. So uh, you know we just blinked real quick and, and and here it is and we're just thrilled. And we haven't finished the month of August yet. No, and there for a while I thought we were in October. The, the the weather was so nice, and of course game day it's hitting in the mid 90s. But of course it wouldn't be football at the beginning of the football season exactly. without that the heat. So we woke up and and you realized you were in Oklahoma after all. That's exactly right. Okay, well, coach, talk talk then really quickly about Coach Pobelish, uh, new head coach here, and it's a, a different feel. It's a different look. The program has made adjustments then, and. What kind of product then we're going to see tonight? But talk about Coach Popolish to begin with. Well, you know, it, when he came in on his interview, uh, well, obviously his resume kind of spoke for itself. Uh, he, he's he been at every level. Uh, he's been an offensive coordinator. He was an offensive coordinator at the time that, uh, that he applied for this position. Uh, one thing we thought we really were looking for uh, was an offensive guy. We, we weren't for sure, but that was something we, we talked about and was one of the boxes that we would, you know, really look strongly at somebody that had a good offensive background. Uh, but the one thing that impressed me about Coach uh, McClellan Pope, and uh, and he has this saying to spot the ball, and and he he knows how to work the internet and 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 these type of things. But uh, um, the one thing that really impressed me about him is he had a plan, uh, and just a plan of just about everything. Um, I there for a while I actually thought maybe he had the answers to the questions we were <laughs> asking him uh, written there next to him because he was answering so quickly, uh, because he he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Uh, now, sometimes we, we take a deep breath to try to keep up with him, and especially our compliance people because, you know, he, he constantly is bringing in uh, new talent. But one of the things he wanted to do was he wanted to get in front of uh, every uh, head high school coach in the state of Oklahoma, and he's done that. He and his staff have been in front of every one of them. And, and we have a – you look at the roster, and it shows that. And we have a lot of Oklahoma kids on the roster. So uh, he just – seem to fit perfectly and ever since he's been here we, he's proven to have fit perfectly um i expect uh, some some good offense i really do I, I think that he knows what he wants to do and and um he had an offensive coordinator to end up um, wasn't here for very long he found he ended up getting a, another job because uh, i knew it was hard for for coach to to give up play, the play calling 
And uh, right. I asked if he was going to get it back, and I think he's taking it back now. So uh, uh, I, it, it's it's really fun to watch them, the energy that they have uh, on the field during practices. And, again, once again, I want to say it very organized. So uh, we, we are excited about this entire uh, football staff. Uh, they're young. They're excited. They're you know, a bunch, bunch of uh, energy. Uh, and we're excited about the young people they brought in here. We're, we're young, but, you know, we have a lot of speed. Uh, and the kids just seem to, to love coming to practice, and that's what you want. You want you want them to not think it's a it's a it's a drag to them that they want to actually be a part of this. And and so far, the coach uh, has has put that uh, that climate onto our football field, and and it's shown. Well, then I'll I'll ask you because I, I think you did answer the question about the product that we'll see tonight, and it, and it sounds like it's going to be a quality product coming out, and and what the uh, home fans here are going to see from the Bulldogs this year. I won't ask you for a score, but I, I will go back and ask the other question, and I think I know the answer then. High-scoring game or low-scoring game tonight? Well, I, you know, I expect it to be high-scoring. Um, I think that no matter what, we're, we're a young team. Uh, uh, Monticello, they don't have the, the, the firepower, some of the firepower they had last year, especially uh, they had a receiver that, that uh, mm -hmm. had opportunity to play in the NFL, and, and he was, he was a, a hard one to guard and, and, and big time in that area. But uh, I think Monticello's always had a good offensive team. Uh, you know, again, being brand new, uh, you know, he does have a young team. Um, and what that means is you can draw the greatest pr play on earth. And, 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 and on when I drew it up on the board, it looked exactly <laughs> right. And then when the, that 18-year-old kid went out there to try to execute it, uh, it, instead of going left, they went right. So you're, I'm kind of curious myself on where it actually ends up. But I, I, I think that he has the patience. I think he's been working with them fantastic. He's, he's got a great op uh, ability to, to communicate to his kids. So I really do expect a really quality program and a, a quality uh, – uh, and I think we're going to be def good defensively too. I, I think what happens, we had a couple of key injuries uh, at this point, at least at the beginning of the year. So we're, again, playing more younger people than we, we would normally. But uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited too. I think we've waited a long time to see this product. Right. Well, so for folks will need to watch the programs then. Oh, absolutely. They'll, they'll definitely absolutely. need to do that. Well, Coach, as and again, I thank you very much for taking the time with us today. I want to commend you also on – the facilities here. I, I enjoy making the trip to Weatherford when I get the opportunity to do that. We are right now inside the Pioneer Cellular Event Center, the jewel of Western Oklahoma, as as it has taken on that moniker. It's fantastic facility. The improvements that have been made over the years on the football field as well have been very nice. Uh, you were talking about the the northern part up there of the campus where the soccer team is playing right now. All of this is just so nice, and I just wanted to commend you on what a, a great program you have here. Well, thank you, Joel. Yeah, it, we're very proud, uh, really are. But I want it, it really is a testament to the, the people who support this, this university and support the athletic program because uh, without them, we, we, couldn't, we couldn't build anything. And so when it comes down to building a facility like this, you have to have a lot of support and people willing to, to give to, to help it happen. You have to have the uh, ability to put that field out there or the golf facility that we built and, and all the press boxes uh, at the North Complex. Uh, uh, you know, we can't be more pleased with the people that surround this program. You know, the state, we've been uh, dealing with budget cuts and whatnot that deals with the budget and uh, scholarships and things like that. Um, but I got to tell you, our administration has been great about trying to help us the best they can. Uh, again, y there's nothing you can do about those type of things, but uh, the support we, we get is, uh, is, I don't think it's sec a second to none because we, we are really, uh, really blessed with the, the, that type of support. Well, it's, it's very nice to be here. Thank you very much for having us here. Coach well, we Todd Thurman. We being here, Joey. You oh, really I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm having a good time. Coach Todd Thurman, the athletic director here at Southwestern Oklahoma State University. And we're going to transition for just a moment from football as we have another guest coming up. We also have volleyball season going on right now, and the volleyball season has gotten underway in Division Two and Division Three in NAIA. And so as we are covering some of those teams, I wanted to run down a couple of the top ten lists in the region here, the MidwestSports.net regional rankings in Division Two. Arkansas Tech coming off a fantastic season in 2017 was our number one team in the preseason. Now I realize there's a week worth of volleyball that's already been played, so – we haven't updated our rankings. We'll get those every couple of weeks. So our preseason rankings, though, Arkansas Tech, the top spot, number two, Nebraska Kearney, three, Rockhurst, four, Central Oklahoma, five, Central Missouri, six, Harding, seven, Upper Iowa, eight, Missouri Western, nine, Wayne State, and 10th, 
in the Midwest region, Arkansas, Fort Smith. Our Division Three rankings have Wartburg at the top spot, Washington, St. Louis, number two, Cornell, number three, Dubuque, number four, Buena Vista, number five, six, Westminster, seven, Webster, eight, Hendricks, nine, Grinnell, and ten, Luther. And then the NAI top ten has Grandview in the top spot, number one in the volleyball rankings there in the Midwest region. In the NAI, number two, Northwestern, Iowa, number three, Dort, number four, Columbia, number five, Park, six is Hastings, seven, Midland, eight, Missouri Baptist, nine, Bellevue, and number 10, College of the Ozarks. And as we talk a little volleyball now on game day, we bring in our next guest, wonderful guy, great human being, fantastic person. The list goes on and on and had a birthday recently. Not so, too long ago. Not, not too, too long, long ago. I don't know about all those other things, but I did have a birthday <laughs> recently. <laughs> so you can attest to that I one. can attest to that one. Josh Collins, who is the head volleyball coach here at Southwestern. And I know it's game day football-wise, and it's game day soccer-wise. And we did get an updated score, by the way, from the North Complex just a moment ago. Central Missouri uh, has come back from a 2-0 deficit. Right now leads 3-2. Now, that was as of just a few minutes ago. So that's what we had. You actually got to watch a little bit of that game earlier, I too. I did. I was you? announcing that game earlier, and uh, I left at the 3-2 mark to – to come for this interview, so I appreciate uh, that. Hopefully, my bad luck left with me, <laughs> and the Bulldogs will fight back right here. Well, and that's over. It's women's soccer game going on. It's game day in soccer. It's game day in football. Southwestern hosting Arkansas Monticello here. Kickoff at six o'clock. That is just about an hour and fifteen minutes away. Let's talk some volleyball then, okay? I, I, I'd love to. It's Can, not game day volleyball, so I'd love to talk volleyball. Okay, I figured you might be able to do that. Southwestern, 4-1 and one to open the 2018 season. A very good start to your year as you all were down in Denton. Uh, got a 3-1 and one record as you were on the campus of Texas Women's University in Denton. And then a midweek non-conference matchup with Cameron on Tuesday night. Well, that's a nice start to the season, though. It is. It's uh, it's good. Um We've, we've won some games that uh, were really tough for us to win. Uh, our one loss is, is a loss that I think that will hurt for a little while because uh, we were their lone win in that tournament, and we beat everybody who beat them. So, <laughs> um, But, you know, that's early season stuff, and I think that we can learn from that. And, you know, we always say in our program, it's not a loss if it's a lesson. So hopefully we'll chalk that up as a lesson and move on. You know, these early season – festivals i guess for lack of a better word it's not really a, a tournament by any stretch it's mainly just an opportunity for what eight teams generally to meet in one location and a little bit around robin try to avoid conference opponents so you're going to see them enough in, during the regular right. season but to build up a bit of a resume what's it like trying to build up your resume that early in the season because conference is what it is i mean you're, you're going to see those opponents uh, it's going to be a long, grueling schedule no matter what conference you're in. And the Great American Conference, volleyball-wise, has you know, grown over the years. I, I say this as the conference has grown, but uh, and volleyball as well. But to try to build a resume in the early going, how tough is that? It's extremely tough, and especially within our region. Um, you know, Within the central region, we have some of the best teams in the country. Uh, we have the eight-time defending national champions, Concordia St. Paul, in our region. So those early season games you have to schedule extremely tough and you have to win and uh, obviously both of those things are tough to do so um, that early season scheduling is very important and um, you know you have to be ready to play right when you come out of the gate and and that's that then is the question you don't know who you have yet I mean you do the recruiting wise you, you're hoping that some of these girls that come in can live up to what you thought they would be when you were out on the recruiting trail getting them but you know, are, are they going to be able to get out there and perform right off the bat? And, and how do things match up chemistry-wise? So what are you seeing from these Bulldogs that you have this year? Well, I, you know, honestly, I didn't know. And we, we've scheduled a completely Division II schedule. Um, we tried to play uh, mid- to upper-level schools from each conference that kind of surround us. Um, and so I, I really didn't know going into that opening weekend. And I knew that some of the schools that we were playing had really good recruiting classes uh, other schools brought back a lot of um, depth and, and maturity, and so I didn't really know how we would stack up going into that first tournament. I felt like on paper we had a really, really good team, but sometimes paper can lie. And uh, we came out and we played like we've uh, got great chemistry, and, and we played you know, pretty clean volleyball for the most part, most of the time. And so I was really excited with our, our first weekend and then our, our first uh, non-conference road trip. 
All right, then let's look around Division Two for just a moment because that's where you get to spend your time is in Division Two. Arkansas Tech, the top team in the region in our preseason rankings, falling on a, a rough go in the outset as the Golden Suns now one and three to open the season. Obviously different than last year because they ran the table in the regular season, a 35-0 and record, just a, a phenomenal year for Coach Christy Byers' bunch. She's moved on and, and taken a different position at a different school. So it's a, a new look there in Russellville. Tough start to open the season. But then you have some of these teams that are perennially good. You've got Nebraska Kearney, our number two team, 4-0 to start the year. Uh, Rockhurst, 4-0 to start the year. Wayne State, 4-0 to start the year. Uh, all these teams – definitely within this region you're right this is this is would you say it's the toughest region in division two uh without a doubt it is definitely the toughest region in division two um you know i think uh on one of the rankings that comes out and and theoretically ranks all the teams all divisions concordia st paul was number 18 in all divisions last year uh you know <laughs> you can't really prove that in any way but right um there is some really, really good uh, volleyball within the central region, but then within your region that you're talking about, Nebraska Kearney has just been uh, consistently good year after year. Arkansas Tech, the year that they had last year, and you know they have a rough start right now, but the teams that they played are extremely exactly. good in their first tournament. And I and I didn't get to that yet, but that's no. that that's the the biggest part of the point. I mean, they're playing those tough teams, but that's what you said you have to do. You, you have to do that, and um, you know Missouri Western, wow. Uh, the job that their coaching staff has done there is incredible. Um, they're an up-and-coming team. So, And then within our conference, Harding, uh, you know, we can talk about Northwestern. We could talk about Oklahoma Baptist. Uh, just top to bottom within our conference, um, everybody is competing at a, a much higher level than when we started this thing in, in 2011. And Northwestern uh, starting the year 4-0 and then in the, in the festival in which they played, Harding 3-1. and you mentioned as well. Let's talk a little bit of football then really quickly as it's game day and about 70 minutes from kickoff out on the field just, well, just beyond the camera. So trust me, we'll be out there and get a look at that a little bit later on tonight with Josh Collins now, the head volleyball coach here at Southwestern. Josh, one of the things that I've, I've watched you do here at, at Weatherford in the time I've known you in the last few years, you have your hands in everything. I mean, you were talking about calling the soccer match out there, and thank you for stopping by here to, to be on Midwest Sports Saturday on a Thursday, because that's how we roll, uh, but also that uh, you also call the basketball games here as well. You do a lot with volleyball. You even wind up helping the conference with baseball. I mean, you're just everywhere. Is there anything that you don't do? What are you doing tonight? Uh, my wife wonders why I don't do the dishes. <laughs> it's usually because I'm at, at an athletic event, so uh, thank you to her for tolerating me. Um, but, yeah, I, I just love student-athletes. I love athletics, and I bleed Swasu blue. And, uh, you know, I guess I, blew, uh, I, I guess I bleed red, white, and blue for the Great American Conference as well. So um, I just enjoy it and uh, l love, this, uh, love this school and love this conference. You have had a chance to see these kids play as well. I know that, that you at, at least were awake during practices as Josh was talking about getting up and being up here for practice at 5.30 this morning. Is that correct? That's right. We, we tried to get here early so our kids could support soccer and then support football as well. So And and the volleyball team, I know the women's basketball team was at the North Complex as well as Haley was talking about that. She, I think, was the only player on the women's basketball team. So thank you, Coach Music, for allowing Haley to come over here and be a part of our broadcast today. But supporting one another in, in all of that, but you had a chance to see these football players practice and play. I'll ask you then what I, I asked uh, the other folks from Southwestern, not for the score, but high scoring game, low scoring game. What do you see out of tonight? I would guess a high scoring game. I think that there's going to be a lot of energy on both sides. Um, you know, UAM is going to be excited to come in and avenge that loss uh, from last year at their place. And uh, obviously, we're, we're here to spot the ball. Um, and so. Uh, really? A, a, <laughs> is that a theme? That. Okay, I was just I'm just checking. If you've been on the Twitters lately, you, you <laughs> might have seen that. But um, I think there's just a lot of excitement surrounding the football program right now here at, at Southwestern, and I think that the kids are going to be excited to play tonight. All right, so excitement, that's, high scoring, low that's, scoring. That's it's my just prediction. Excitement. That's excitement. your prediction. Whether it's high Go or low, go out on a limb there. It's going to be. I, I'll say high scoring. I'm going to say high scoring. Okay. I think so. I think it's. I think on a day like this, and and I don't know. 
I, I just don't want to get people in trouble compliance wise. That's my only thing. Getting to talk to you guys, I, I, I want to watch that. So yeah. high scoring, low scoring. If you're wondering why I'm being a little vague there, that's, that's what, I'm, it. I, I will not predict a specific score. There you go. Uh, Hope for sure. Okay, so I think on a, on a on a warm day like today, the wind blowing, it could be it could be a fun one to watch. So that's and that's also a big deal too. In in recent years, you know the opening day of the season has had inclement weather. And so, I mean, we've we've had a couple of times that it was just it could go really long. So I, I think it's just a great game day. Yeah, today. you couldn't pick better weather than today, unless you don't like the heat, and then you could pick a lot of lo- a lot better weather. <laughs> All right, uh, Southwestern maybe uh, three and one, four and one right now. Excuse me, with that midweek win, four and one on the year, and we're going to keep watching the Bulldogs as this season goes along. Josh Collins, thank you for taking time with us today on Midwest Sports Saturday. Thanks for having me, Joey. We're glad you're here, and we're glad you're doing this show. This is awesome. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Josh Collins, uh, head volleyball coach. As we look now and we wrap up our show, let's take a look then at what is going on football-wise tonight. And we'll stay within the Midwest region and wrap things up here. Uh, Kickoff in Stillwater a little bit later on tonight, and I think that's going to get some national television as well. Missouri State taking on Oklahoma State. That's in Division I and in Division Three. Hamline at Buena Vista. That is also tonight. No NAI games on a Thursday night. So the rest of our schedule looks like this. Let's talk about the top ten teams according to the MidwestSports.net rankings. Three games in which there are matchups of two teams in our top ten. And the probably the premier game of the night is going to be in Hayes, Kansas. Fort Hayes State swept through the MIAA regular season last year, lost in the first round of the playoffs, 11-1, During the regular season, Fort Hayes State hosting our number five team, Central Missouri. And that is going to be again in Hayes. So big matchup there. The number two team in the Midwest region, Northwest Missouri, hosting Missouri Western. It's going to be number three, Harding, at Henderson State tonight. Now, Harding, as we mentioned earlier, making it to the semifinals of Division II last year. And let's see how Coach Simmons' program can transition into year two of his tenure. Number nine, Arkansas Tech at number four, Southern Arkansas. Big matchup in Magnolia. Another top ten Midwest regional matchup. Number seven, Central Oklahoma taking on Pittsburgh State, and that will be at Pittsburgh State there in southeast Kansas. Number eight team in the Midwest region, Washita on the road at Northwestern. And the number ten team, number 10 team in the Midwest region, southeastern Oklahoma, is hosting Southern Nazarene tonight. Also on the docket tonight, Arkansas-Monticello. That's the game that we're going to be watching right here, and we'll be back with a post-game wrap following that game. They are here at Southwestern. Emporia State taking on Northeastern State in Tahlequah. It'll be Washburn at Lindenwood. That is tonight. Eastern New Mexico on the road at Missouri S&T. Michigan, Ta- Michigan State traveling down to take on Truman State. Missouri Southern at Nebraska Kearney. Washburn at Lindenwood, we mentioned that one. Winona State at Wayne State and Oklahoma Baptist on the road at East Central. And that is a look at the Division II lineup. Following tonight's game, we'll have as many scores as we can get to you throughout Division II, that Missouri State and Oklahoma State score as well. So we're wrapping things up here on our debut edition of Midwest Sports Saturday, and that's been the theme It's been spot the ball, and it's been on a Thursday. So we've had a fun time here from Weatherford. I do want to say thank you very much to a few people. always want to start by saying thank you to my wife, Jody, and to my family for allowing me to get to do some of these things. I'm appreciative to all of them. I want to say thanks to Dylan Perry, who has been directing and technical directing and all kinds of other things. He's got audio going. He has graphics. There's been very little today that he hasn't done, so thanks to Dylan Perry. I also want to say thanks to a few other folks really quickly and start with David Anderson and with Joe Vales, with Philip Morse, with Steve Welch, and especially Courtney Johnson. Without their help over the course of the last few weeks, this program could not have been aired. And so I am very, very, very grateful, Courtney, and all of you all for what you've done to put Midwest Sports Saturday on the air. So that's it for all of our guests and uh, guests, and it's been very, very fun to have with us today. Chet Pobolish, as well as Jimmy Sledge, Doug Self, Haley Tucker, our correspondent, Todd Thurman, and Josh Collins. 
And for Dylan Perry, I'm Joey McWilliams. Thanks for watching Midwest Sports Saturday. We'll be back after this is done tonight with some scores. God bless you, everybody. Have a great one.